How to install Octoprint's Discord remote plugin. Okay, so in this video we're going to do uh, a quick rundown on how to get Octoprint uh, Discord remote plugin installed and working correct. We're going to start out by installing the plugin uh, using the plugin manager like you normally would do. Quick search. Okay, we see it here. Click install. We wait for this to complete. All right, and once it's done, we're going to have to restart the services here so it takes effect. Um, I'm running multiple instances. So I like to manually restart the services through SSH. It'll take a second to restart, and we can do a reconnect and then a reload. While that's reloading, let's take a look at the instruction page. The pictures here are a little outdated. It's missing some of the options down here. There's a link on the right side to their GitHub page, which provides instructions on installing. Let's take a look at that now. So on the GitHub page, if you scroll down, uh, you'll see the README file here is published. It walks you through the install. Um, we already did the plugin manager install, and then it walks you through uh, setting up a bot on Discord and you know there's a, a link here that kind of tells you how to go through it this is that link um, it, it was missing a couple steps and had some of the information you kind of had to guess on it wasn't all that clear so um, i found another link that was a little more helpful to me um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves so the first thing you need to do is create uh, a home server so open Discord and click the plus on the bottom left here. Click Create New Server. Now name the server whatever you'd like and click Create. I've already done this, created Fatman Home. Now that the server is defined, we need to create a text channel for the printer. Click the plus here. And then we select Text Channel and we name this the name of the printer. Click Create. And as you can see, I've already done that here. I created Ender 1 for my first Ender 3 printer. We now have to create a bot within Discord. I'll have this link in the description because it describes how to do it a little better than the one that was provided with the instruction. Just make sure you already authenticated to Discord through the web browser. Click the link to the application page. It should populate. And once we're here, we need to create a new application and we're going to name it Ender1, just like the channel, create. Let's look at the instructions for the next part. We created a new application and gave it a name. So our next step is to create a bot. Let's click add a bot and yes to create. We're going to keep the same name. And one other thing that I like to do here is change this from public to private. So we're going to copy this token and go back to Octoprint. From here, we want to manage the plugin. Select the plugin, and we're going to paste that token in this field here. And the next thing we need is the channel ID. So we get that back in Discord. Now to get the channel ID, we have to enable it. So we're gonna select the settings, the gear down here, and scroll down to appearance. Scroll down to the bottom again, and we're going to enable this setting right for developer mode. And once that's enabled, we can escape out and we're going to right click on the channel 
in, in the context menu, we should be able to copy the ID. Back in Octoprint, we can paste it under the channel ID field. If we go back to the original instructions on the GitHub page, uh, we can see that, you know, we created the Discord bot and got the channel ID. And then it doesn't really tell you what to do from here. I mean, it mentions the API here, but it's not really clear what it's used for. If you leave this out, the bot will show as offline all the time and it's it won't communicate back and forth. You won't be able to send a command. So copy this bit of text here and we'll back to Octoprint here. It says uh, the base URL, we can paste this that we copied and you need to put in your Octoprint URL, which is right here. So again, I'm running um, multiple instances of Octoprint. So uh, base URL for the instance that you're running. Um, and then we can click save here. So it comes back online and um, we see that you now have this Discord remote command. Now this might be red um, if it's offline and it's green when it's online. Um, we still have one or two more things to do to make sure that everything's working correctly. Uh, the first thing to do is add the bot to your channel. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so we're back on the, the instructions page on how to define the bot. Um, you can see that we did all this already. Again, you know, I've set mine not to be public. Uh, I don't see any need to have that. Um, so this part about inviting your bot to the channel is kind of one of the another one of the things that was missing that you kind of had to just like muddle around to try and figure it out so um this tells you how to do it you go into the oauth2 tab and um when you scroll down you pick a bot and then down here you're going to define the permissions that you want to give the bot um, and then that creates a URL. So let's take a look at that now. Uh, we go to the portal. We go to the OAuth2. All right. So we already have our client ID defined. Uh, it's a bot. And uh, in this case, you really only need to have text permissions. Um, you don't necessarily need all these permissions, but this is kind of what worked for me. So let's go with it, right? So you copy this URL after you define the position, the permissions that you need. Um, and then we open a new tab and paste this URL in. It's going to pop up. All right. It says, okay, you're adding this bot to it. You're going to add it to your server. These were all the permissions that we um, that we specified originally, and we're going to authorize it. And we're going to check this box that we're not a robot. Okay, we need to pick uh, the traffic light, and we're authorized. Now we want to see if everything's working. So we go back to Octoprint, and now we can see it's green on green, so it's kind of hard to see, but we can see Discord remote command is green. So that means it's online. We open it up and it says, what command do you want to send? So we'll send a status, okay. And then we can check Discord and see if we got a response. All right, so Ender one bot is online. We see it here with the, the green light. It responded with the status, the local IP of our Octoprint server. Um, we're not connected to the printer and we get a snapshot. Great, so everything looks good, right? Well, let's see if we can request a status remotely. So we can say status, enter. 
And then look, it responds. It says, permission is denied. Well, so what good is this if we can't, uh, if we can't send a, you know, a cancel a print or start a print remotely or get a snapshot if we wanted to. Um, so obviously there's a couple more things that we need to do. Let's take a look at that. We go into the settings. Discord remote and we see right here access settings. So access rules allows specific users to do specific can commands. Uh, and basically, you know, all users are starred. Great. So uh, there's nothing in the command. So that's probably what's going on here, right? So if we put a star and um, so that means all users can run all commands. Great, right? Why don't we do that? Well, we can, and I'm sure it will work, but what if you have other people connecting to your Discord server? Do you want them to cancel your print or start a print? That's not really the safest thing to do. So let's restrict it to ourselves, right? So my user is Batman66, right? It says users. I typed in my username. It says command. We'll click save. All right. And let's go back to Discord and see if that fixed it. So status. Still denied. Now, this is another thing that there's really no directions on how to get this working. Um, and what you would think would be obvious would be to specify your username. It, it just doesn't work. So um, I fumbled around a little and then I'm like, you know, there's got to be like a, a GUID or a SID or something that links my username, um, Fatman66, to some type of ID. So uh, if you right click on your user, there's this copy ID, which might have been apparent to some people, but it was something that, you know, in my troubleshooting, I just kind of came across. So let's try the ID and see if that works. So it's not a user, you know, maybe it should say user ID here. Let's put that in there and see what happens. Okay, save. And let's go back to Discord and let's try a help this time. Oh, and look at that, it responded. And it gives you all these commands that you can do. Take a snapshot, the status, pause, resume, time lapse, mute, unmute. Um, and you can also send G code commands. So let's do a status just to make sure that, you know, that was the error we got before. So we'll test that status. Here it is. We got our snapshot. So at this point, everything should be set up correctly and functional.